Kendrick Lamar, I have one message for you. Get that crown of thorns off your head. Listen to me, everything about Kendrick's performance at Glastonbury is the complete opposite of what Jesus did on the cross. Oh, Kendrick Lamar's crown of thorns is glamorous. It was designed by Tiffany & Co. and inside it are eight thousand diamonds. But Christ's crown of thorns was anything but glamorous. It was twisted into his brow, smashed into his skull, and because it made him look so repulsive, the Bible says that people beat their chests and could not look at him because they were disgusted by what they saw. Oh, Kendrick Lamar's message that day was the same as many other woke musicians who were protesting about what has just happened in the USA. In other words, they're saying it's okay to destroy lives. But Jesus Christ's message was was the complete opposite. He said, I, I don't want to destroy lives. I've come to save lives by laying down my own life. Oh, Kendrick Lamar's stage was beautiful, expensive, shared with many other A-list celebrities. But Christ's stage was Golgotha, the place of the skull. And the only people who shared that stage were the worst criminals ever. And when he was on that stage, there was nothing exciting, nothing beautiful. No, it was a place where men never came back. Oh, Kendrick Lamar will have received thousands and thousands of dollars for performing at Glastonbury Festival. But Jesus Christ was paid nothing. No, in fact, it was him who was doing the paying. As he hung on that tree on that cross, he paid the price for our sin. The debt that we could never pay to God, Christ paid for in full so that we could be forgiven if we turn to him in faith. Oh, Kendrick Lamar, as he stood in that performance and as he rapped his music, thousands cheered him on, thousands loved him, thousands worshipped his name. But when Christ stood there, yes, there was a big crowd watching, but they weren't cheering him on. No, they were cursing him, mocking him, scorning him, because they hate Jesus Christ without a cause. Oh, for Kendrick Lamar, it was just a performance. It was just theatre, art, acting. He was doing it all for the crowd as a sort of role play. But Jesus Christ did not play make-believe. No, when he shed his blood, it wasn't pretend blood like Kendrick's. No, it was real blood that was shed. His real blood was shed on that cross, so that blood can wash away our sins. Kendrick Lamar, after he left the stage, I would imagine he would lie down on a luxurious hotel bed. And when he goes back to the States, he'll leave on a private jet. But Christ, when he left his stage, he left in an invisible body bag. He was laid in a cold, empty tomb. Why? Because he really had died. Oh, Kendrick Lamar, can I gently say this to you once more? You have no business to wear a crown of thorns because you did not suffer the same way that my Saviour suffered. And for you to wear a glamorous crown with 8,000 diamonds in it, it just makes a mockery of what Jesus really did do on the cross for your sins and for mine. But I know exactly what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, will this British guy just chill out? Why are all you Christians always getting so upset? You all need to just relax. It's only art. Well, if you're thinking that right now, can I ask you this question? Why does art, why does Hollywood's art always have to be at the expense of my saviour? Why do we never laugh at other religious figures? Why do we never make a mockery of them? Well, I think deep down, you know the reason why. But there's another reason. And if you're skeptical about Jesus Christ, here's my big question to you. Why is it that people always mock Jesus? Why is it that Jesus Christ's name is always the name that is dragged through the dirt? People don't say, oh, Michael Jackson. Or they don't say, oh, for, for Presley's sake. No, they always use Christ's name. I'll tell you why the reason is. Because the devil has an agenda. And you might not realize that this, but the devil is the one who runs this world. And something else you probably don't know is, do you know what the devil's job was when he was up in heaven? He used to play music. So is it not fascinating that the most anti-Christian people, the most Christ-hating people on this earth are musicians? And Satan is using musicians right now to spread his message to get people away from the Lord Jesus Christ. And what is his greatest tool? Mockery. Let me get real personal with you. Can I tell you why I found Kendrick Lamar's performance so deeply offensive? The reason is, you might just think it's just a twisted crown of thorns on Christ's skull, but there's a real reason why he wore a crown of thorns, and that reason is one of the main things that makes Christ the most precious, the most incredible person who ever lived. 
Okay, let's rewind. Let's go right back to the very beginning. Let's stand there in the Garden of Eden and let's watch Adam and Eve. They eat of that forbidden fruit and then sin enters into the world. And God says, because sin has entered into the world, there'll be a sign that you will notice that this world has now been corrupted. It's cursed. What was that sign? The Bible says, then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth to you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. Did you notice that? The sign that sin had entered into the world was thorns. So that's why when Christ wore that crown of thorns, there was a significance to it. It meant that not only was this crown of thorns being pressed into his skull, but all of our sin was being pressed on Christ Jesus. He wore our sin like he wore that crown of thorns and he took the punishment so we can be forgiven. Let me put it another way to you. Imagine you're watching this video now and you're 22 years old and you, let's say, commit 20 sins a week. So maybe you tell five lies, Maybe you say blasphemous words five times, five things you look at you shouldn't, uh, five times you're proud or you're arrogant. Let's just say 20 sins a week. That's then a thousand a year about, am I right? And then how many is that if you live to the age of 22? 22,000. Suppose you get to 80, that's 80,000 sins. And you stand before the living God with these 80,000 sins to your account. And he says, why should I let you into my heaven? you'll probably stand there speechless. And that is why we need Jesus Christ. Because Christ didn't just take 80,000 sins in his body. He took billions and billions of sin. All of the sins that we've ever committed was embedded on Christ Jesus. And God poured out all of his wrath, all of his justice on Christ Jesus for my sin and your sin so that we could be forgiven. Because when he died on that cross, the sacrifice, the debt was paid. He took it so that we have a chance to say, God, have mercy on me. I know I can't be forgiven. I know I can't pay for my sins. I know I deserve to go to hell. I know I'm condemned, but Christ stands in my place. And my dear friend, I'm asking you, will you consider this Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ? That's why no man has the right to wear a crown of thorns as a sort of artistic way of expressing himself because they do not realise what the crown of thorns represents. And perhaps you're watching this today and you're more interested in Kendrick Lamar than you are in Jesus Christ. Well, if that's you, it's no accident you found this video and I just plead with you, see how special Jesus is, see how holy he is and see what a great sinner you are and how you have this huge debt and only Jesus can take that debt. Only Jesus can wear that crown of thorns for you and I'm asking you to come to him because okay, yes, Jesus, he wore a crown of thorns. He was put in a tomb dead, but on the third day, he rose from the dead and after rising from the dead, he ascended, he went back to heaven and right now he's seated at the right hand of God and he doesn't wear a crown of thorns. He wears a crown of righteousness and that king is coming back. My king Jesus is coming back to judge the living and the dead and he's going to set up his kingdom on this earth. And I'm asking you, are you going to be part of that kingdom? Because every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee will bow. And whether you bow the knee right now, you will bow the knee one day. So I'm asking you to come to him right now. Stop whatever you're doing. Turn from your wickedness. Turn from your sins. Turn from the lies that Hollywood likes to spin to you that this is the way you should live your life and turn to Christ right now. And I promise you, you won't regret it. But hey now, Kendrick Lamar is not the only one to mock the Lord Jesus Christ. Last year, another rapper did something very similar. If you've not seen my video on it, please click here. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. I'd be so grateful for your friendship here at Off The Curb Ministries. God bless you all, and thank you for watching.